हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड पेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन आवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ऑडिट ऑफ सर्जिकल एफिशियंसी सो शुड वी थिंक अबाउट time required for doing a surgery so that's the question so here to begin with i'm just showing the audit of surgical time that i have done for one of my routine cases a regular case here patient is a bit uncooperative as you can see keeps moving the eye the surgery is being done on topical anesthesia and uh, on the left side you can see the stopwatch also there that uh, the surgery or surgical time is being you know analyzed there and on the left side lower part you can see that i have written the exact time required for each step so i have completed the incision making in 26 seconds now and i am proceeding with capsulorexis i have also done a manual marking that is the impression on the corneal epithelium with the marker cc marker because i want to have capsulorexis size of 5 mm here i'm using haldipurkar's cross section forceps here and which is my favorite and i'm according to the impression that i have created on the epithelium i'm moving around and having a rexis of 5 mm exactly here uh, using heavy dispersive ovd helps me in maintaining the chamber and the step for capsule rexis took around 46 seconds moving on to hydro dissection a complete hydro wave you can see on the other side i tap on the nucleus once the hydro is complete i am going to push little bit of fluid and this is my standard technique in grade 1 to cataract which uh, this one is and i have prolapse one pole of the nucleus out here and the nucleus management is uh, done generally by this technique in my cases where i just pierce into the mid peripheral part using the bevel down feco tip here longitudinal feco and i just chop the nucleus into two parts going to quadrant removal using torsional feco energy there very efficiently you can see the cde on the right top corner i hardly use even less than one cde which is very efficient so it's a good technique to have very efficient the tip is sideways bevel and i'm slightly anterior to the iris plane which makes this technique very safe for these kind of nuclei there the nucleus management is finished in 44 seconds and i move on to cortex removal so here a bit of time is taken because the uh, the assistant is going to change the tubings to a coaxial i which is my favorite and you can see the cortex removal technique where i sweep tangentially under the capsule so i grab hold of the cortex anterior cortex on one side and then sweep across so it is also safe for the zonules at the same time it's very efficient so for sub incisional cortex i am taking more times so because i want it to be safely removed without causing any complication so all in all cortex removal takes 54 seconds and as my assistant is loading the iol i remove the dispersive ovd in that time so because it takes little bit of time to remove all the dispersive ovd i have done that now and before i insert i will i am going to put little bit of cohesive ovd which uh, is helpful because removal of cohesive ovd after i l insertion is very fast and very efficient and at the same time you don't leave any ovd behind giving very good post operative outcome i have just inflated the chamber little bit more with bss but i could have just added little bit of cohesive ovd there Uh, and uh, as the assistant gives me the uh, i will loaded into the injector cartridge this is a plate haptic i will trifocal so i inject it right into the bag the leading haptic go into the bag and the trailing haptics are still in the anterior chamber i thought that the anterior chamber was little bit on shallow side at this point so i decided to push in some fluid using the coaxial ia probe and then push the trailing haptics into the bag and as there is just little bit of covid ovd in the anterior chamber as well as uh, probably little bit behind the iol i am going to remove it so the visco removal is going to take very little time here because remember i have removed dispersive ovd while the iol was getting ready and then afterward just a covid ovd takes 15 seconds 
and now only the incision hydration remains. So if you have done very good incisions, it hardly takes any time. A good incision is usually self-sealing once you hydrate the sides and then little bit of roof there. So it takes around 29 seconds to make sure and then at the edge and I inject little bit of diluted uh, moxifloxacin. That's the end of the surgery. So you can see the patient is little bit uncooperative, but still I could manage below five minutes. Now regarding the audit of surgical time, one school of thought completely, you know, doesn't agree with it. It's, it says that it's absolutely unnecessary. There is undue importance to the time and can cause compromise in safety of the procedure. So we must remember we want efficient surgery and not hasty surgery. So that is something to be remembered. When we are, you are auditing surgical time, you are looking at the efficiency. If surgery is doing fast but increasing the risk, that is not something which we want. So the second school of thought says that it will definitely help the surgeon to improve the technique. So we are focusing on efficiency here and not speed of the surgery. Audit will help the surgeon to find out those weak links. You know, when you keep on doing these audits, you will find that this particular step, I require a lot of time. And whenever you have an efficient surgeon, patients are greatly benefited. Patients are happier, patients get better outcomes when the, their surgeons are more efficient. So efficiency comes with accuracy and better outcomes. So how should we do it? So should we be comparing uh, these surgeries with others to begin with? How should we do it? So first, most important thing is that we should start recording each and every surgery that you do. So once you have that, note down the time required for each step in all your surgeries and then compare the videos where you needed least time for a particular step and learn from them, your own videos, your own surgeries. And then also compare the same steps in surgical videos of more proficient surgeons and there are a lot of them. What should be avoided is that while operating, the surgeon must focus on doing each and every step safely and perfectly and never focus on time during the surgery. It's only in the post-surgery analysis you should be doing all this. I would like to know more comments on this. So do write. Thank you.